What's your mm-hmm. thought on, on, on AI um, and how it's going to impact the field of data analytics? The easiest prediction in the world to make is to say that the current trend is going to continue. Mm-hmm. Anytime you watch, I don't know, what, what sporting events do you watch other than MMA? That might not be a good example. <laughs> Bas- basketball? Okay, basketball. Yeah. Anytime you watch a halftime show in basketball, take listen to what the predictions are. Other than maybe Charles Barkley, who sometimes is just <laughs> being an antagonist. <laughs> The other commentators, what will they always predict at halftime? They will almost always predict this thing that happened in the first half. It's going to keep happening in the second half and way more. That's their prediction every time. It's the easiest thing to predict. This this thing we've already seen happening is going to keep happening. I see a lot of that with predictions on AI. Everything that's been happening the last few years, it's going to keep happening more and more and more. Anybody that says that, just tune it out. Because all they're doing is just, they're just extrapolating the line upward, onward and upward. It's tough to say Mm -hmm. what exactly is going to happen with AI. I find myself wondering, we we see round after round of tech layoffs. I find myself wondering how much of that is powered by automation making some of the jobs redundant. I wonder if that, how much of that is powered by Some of these tech companies just got way too big. Mm -hmm. They started funding all sorts of things that don't drive profits. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, capitalism always wins. And there's a reckoning where if you're you're not a rainmaker, if you're not driving profits, you're going to be ushered out the door. I think that obviously AI is going to continue. There's not going to be... No, some no slow down no pause like Elon Musk is asking you need to pause a little bit <laughs> here's the problem we don't we don't control the whole world yep that's true we could we could absolutely make some draconian law in the united states or any other country could where we say ai is capped at this level nobody can research agi or anything that mimics human thought we could have this butlerian jihad like they have in the dune books and have a war against the thinking machines or you know terminator judgment day one of these apocalyptic futuristic uh (laughs) predictions you could have that in the united states you could have some law that said all ai research is regulated by the government now Mm -hmm. the issue is there are plenty of countries out there that won't do that yep that's true and the developments that they make will proliferate worldwide it's a global economy now. So if we say all stop on AI, okay, I, that might accomplish something. Russia's not going to say that. Eastern yep. Europe is not going to say that. China is yep. not going to say that. Yep. India is not going to say that. So we, we don't control the AI sphere. We yep. control a big chunk of it. But I don't know that, I mean, Elon Musk has some great ideas, but <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's big on ideas and he's uh, he's short on implementation he's not a he's not a politician he doesn't have to actually govern anything other than his own companies so sure great idea let's pause ai how how would we enforce (laughs) that what would that even look like yeah um so yeah absolutely i think it's going to continue the the vast majority of people and companies and government organizations that are using ai are using it responsibly yes i think with an eye towards, at some point, what should and shouldn't be done with AI. And I think that the vast majority of the things, when you dig into what AI is, when when you grow up dreaming of being a data scientist, Mm -hmm. and you think data science is the sexiest job of the 21st century, right? When you actually see what machine learning is, Mm -hmm. when you look at supervised learning, and, Mm -hmm. and it says, based on a historical data set, you are trying to predict a number, or category yeah. and you kind of look at it and you go really <laughs> the vast majority of things that people consider to be ai first of all are not actual intelligence in any way shape or form it's a software executing the, the purpose for which it was built and the rest of it i don't know that you can govern it necessarily yeah. you can pass all the laws you want and 
things are going to happen. People are going to do unauthorized things. And I don't know what can be done to, to govern or slow it down at this point. Right. I think at some point it's like many other things. It's like weapons. It's like you, you kind of have to hope that the good guys using AI will counterbalance the bad guys using AI. Uh, did Whether you, that's did, a forlorn hope, I don't know. The genie, the, it, that's where we are. The genie is out of the box. It's, uh, it's too late. It is. Yeah. And I don't know that it was ever in. Yeah. At, at, at what That's point true. should we have <laughs> shut it down? Have we passed the point of no return? And if so, oh. where was it? I don't think anyone can really say that. Right. It's like the internet or it's like uh, the smartphone, right? We live with yeah. it now. Um, this is the AI revolution. And Absolutely. Talk, talking about AI, um, I know there is... Um, some people talking about AI in the military. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know if you follow in that little bit. And what's your thought on that? Thoughts about automated weapons? Yes, anything that we do in AI with the with the military in this military field, you know, it's all over the place. Whatever I knew at my clearance level, and in the operations I was on, is small potatoes compared to what they're working on, on the top secret level at DARPA and various other government think tanks and research centers, they're doing things that you and I on the outside <laughs> will not know about for 20 or 30 years, yep. if we ever know about them. AI in the military, it's all over the place. It's been there for a while. We started hearing about smart weapons in the Gulf War in 1991. That was mm -hmm. 30 plus years ago. Ever since then, the evolution of warfare has been to more and more and more smart weapons, automated weapons, robotic weapons. It's That is definitely going to continue because that is the way to military superiority. And military mm -hmm. superiority still in this day and age fuels a lot of things. All of the other instruments of power, political, uh, what are the other ones? <laughs> Diplomatic. <laughs> I'm already forgetting my lessons in Marine Corps. But to, to have that military power, it enables a lot of other things. Yeah. No, no peer country out there, United States, China, Russia, India, any of these high tech, big military countries, none of them are going to kind of voluntarily say, we'll go ahead and handicap ourselves. <laughs> you all do, do what you, whatever you want. Yeah. That's, that's not an option. Yeah. Um, or you will quickly within one generation, you'll you'll find yourself out of the military game and on the sidelines watching. And we're not willing to do that. So it's it's there. It's going to stay. It is that is the price of competing militarily on the world stage right now. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a lot of data analysis there. There's a lot of machine learning. All these drones, all these drones use a lot of data processing. They do. Um, and then the autonomous weapons. Um, I don't know if um, if we're going to get to a point where they're going to make their own decisions or it's going to still be human being. <laughs> to a certain extent, they already have. Mm -hmm. um, we the, now the United States has been responsible with our use of such things. There, there are levels of autonomy. And there are weapons out there, ours and, and other people's, that have the ability to, uh, to strike without an express authorization at the moment of strike. So send a missile up into the stratosphere. It's to, to search for some enemy ship. And then when it sees it, it has the authorization to engage. That exists. Wow. That's, it exists for, for several countries. Um, I think the United States stopped using weapons like that for a while. I'm not sure if they're back in the arsenal. But um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs>